like, in, I, I like to quote something that uh, one of my friends, Alex uh, Venezia, said one time where he says, just make something so good that people can't ignore it. I, I like that quote, and I'm going to add a little bit more onto that quote, which is paint something that you enjoy. Because if you enjoy painting it, people are going to resonate with that enjoyment. I feel like resonating with enjoyment is a lot more important than, you know, oh, how cool or how technically accurate this technique is or whatever. I mean, that's all great, but I feel like that enjoyment is something that, you know, you can't really teach, but it's something that you that will just, you know, resonate throughout the painting. And if it connects with you, it's going to connect with someone else. And even if it connects with just one person, you made that person's day a lot better because they connected with it. Welcome to the Creative Community Podcast presented by Destination Arte. I'm David. And I'm Mark. And as brothers, we grew up telling stories together for over 15 years. And as adults, we want to continue telling stories together, and we want to invite you into our brother's brain trust. We started this podcast to share the beginning of our story, the influences that we had when we were younger, and then continue writing that story together. And we're doing that by building a community of people who work together to find creative solutions to telling inspirational stories. And uh, today, we have an interview coming your way. We're talking with oil painter Kai Loon Q. Yeah. Kai shares with us how he got into painting the pop culture subjects that he has been enjoying recently. And he also shares with us his passion for teaching and his philosophy of why he thinks people should paint in the first place. So without further ado, here is our conversation with oil painter Kai Loon Koo. Thanks for having me on. Um, so yeah, my name is Kai, uh, Kai Loon Koo. Uh, I'm a visual artist, I'd say oil painter, and uh, something that I've been working on, for those of you guys who are following me on Instagram or on social media, you may have, um, you know, recognized that I've been doing a lot of uh, pop culture paintings, like in the style of traditional oil uh, realism, and, you know, traditional a la prima style, so that's kind of like what I've been kind of working on. I've mainly just been teaching with uh, you know, places like Vision X and Sentient Academy, and yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It's really cool to see you um, paint those pop culture subject matters in that traditional style. You always bring your your signature flair to it. Um, so it's it's really cool. What got you started doing that? Um, so it's actually very interesting because for the longest time, I always felt like, um, you know, like as oil painters, we have like a fixed subject, especially people pursuing, you know, representational painterly uh, realism, right? Like we always have like a fixed subject we have to kind of do, you know, <laughs> like whether it be still lives or on plein air or portraits, figures, right? And then I, I've been doing that for so long that one day I'm like, I'm kind of bored with all these subjects. Like what if I just paint something that appeals to me, you know, like the nerd side of me, like the nerdy pop culture side of myself because I don't really see a lot of people doing that um, and people who are doing that are either doing it digitally right <laughs> or um, it's kind of like a one-off thing but I'm like oh like you know, what if I were to kind of express that and kind of bridge that you know um, and that's kind of like what what got started you know um, in my journey of doing that and I've been enjoying it so much more. Yeah I I want to know um, what's the most unexpected or unique response you've gotten? Cause I mean, I, obviously these are really cool paintings and it's, you've taken fan art and you've kind of like taken it to another level. You've said, listen, this is fan art, right? Like this isn't just <laughs> my drawing of Batman. This is art that, that is a representation. One of your pin posts is Batman right now. So yeah. like, what's a unique response that you've gotten from that or maybe something you didn't expect, or maybe someone you didn't expect to respond to that type of art. You know, um, there wasn't any really one standout response. I, I'd say like I was just I, I was expecting backlash, honestly, just because, um, you know, the whole stigma of like people making art that's like more like fan art or art that's like more, you know, on, you know, pop culture um, imagery. Like usually people relate that to like amateur art and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I was actually expecting more of a backlash in a way, but um, I, I, I'd say like people have been enjoying it. I, I recently was at the Portrait Society and people were talking to me about it too. Uh, some being like artists that I really admire. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this is, um, you know, like, this is great that people are willing to kind of accept, you know, different subjects, subject matters. And it's been something that I've been really enjoying because for the longest time, at least after I graduated college four years ago, I always felt like, 
every time I painted, I felt like I wasn't really painting for myself. I was painting for, I guess, like what I felt like people wanted to see, you know what I mean? Um, especially since I kind of come from that school of thought of, um, you know, like people like Richard Schmidt, because I, I basically learned under his book. I learned from, you know, uh, his acquaintances. Like my first teacher was Daniel Keyes, Michelle Dunaway, like, um, you know, all those guys um, that really heavily inspired me. So I've always felt like, oh, I got to like keep working on particular subjects like that are popular with like that crowd. But, you know, one day I'm just like, you know, like, well, what happens if I just did this? And I did. And people have been responding positively to it, um, which, um, which, which I'm really grateful for. So, yeah. yeah. So there isn't really one response, but it's been positive, pretty positive. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I remember um, Daniel Key said, he said, I used to go to antique stores and I would see stuff and I would say, Richard would paint that, you know, oh, mm -hmm. that's it. And he said, and I would mm -hmm. always pick those things up and paint them. But he said, mm -hmm. the big shift for me came when I started going to antique stores and going, I want to paint that instead mm -hmm. of looking yeah. for what, you know, Mr. Richard would, would get. So it's yeah. such a cool, that's so cool to see that you found that, that, you know, that moment for you and that, that kind of thing. So that's cool. Well, we want I, to start I off. Have one, yeah, go ahead. Can I have an ask another question? I'm sorry. Yeah, you can, I, you can. Absolutely. Kai, your, your portrait, your portrait abilities are so strong and it's, it's very evident in these pop culture paintings. And I'm wondering two things. How have you seen that, that portrait technique help you tell these stories of the paintings that you're making now? And does it feel like a no brainer? Like uh, now that you've like started it, does it feel kind of like, why wasn't I doing this, you know, like uh, earlier or I I'm curious to hear. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, uh, aside from painting, I mainly teach, right? So um, even though my subject matter was mainly portraiture um, before, like back in the past, uh, every time I approach a painting, I always want to think about it, you know, as abstraction, right? Just abstract shapes of color. Like I myself have never really studied anatomy or anything like that. Like I, I feel like, you know, if you truly just wanted to visually represent something, um, you know, in a la prima, you, you don't have to like really know too much. Like, I feel like that, you know, I feel like that kind of mindset really helps my students out too, because they feel like, oh, I don't need to like, you know, go through all this. Like I could just like pick something up and just, you know, make something, right? I feel like that's a lot more uh, attainable. Um, so every time I'm teaching, I always tell students, it's like, oh, it, it doesn't matter like whether this is a portrait or anything like that. Like if you just break everything down into equal abstraction, and just capture it, you'll be able to kind of capture anything you want. So that kind of um, mindset kind of, you know, fed into, um, you know, the recent paintings that I've been doing. I, I actually feel like they further amplify that point, which is, you know, sometimes, like if I was painting someone like, like a Batman portrait, right? Like, you know, he has a mask on, right? Like, it's not like, like your typical subject matter. But if you just don't think about anything like, oh, that's like his face, that's like his jawline, that's like a mask. Instead, just thinking in terms of like abstraction, it just becomes like this beautiful abstract painting that just just so happens to kind of look and uh, resonate with people, um, you know, portraying out like the visual of the, recogniz uh, the recognizable quality of Batman, right? So mm -hmm. that's something I usually want to, I, I like, I guess, to, you know, communicate with people where it's like, I'm, I'm painting abstractions. But it's just like abstractions that will connect visually with people, right? So that's something that I I, I really like enjoy. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. I love love that philosophy. That's just a, that's awesome. Um, well, we want to get into our first question, which is, when was the moment that you knew you wanted to share your paintings with other people? Like specifically, you wanted other people to see them. Oh man. Um, I mean, for me, I definitely felt like, I guess like, I would say the first moment that it wasn't the first moment I, where I wanted to share my opinions with people per se, but it's the first moment where I wanted to create things that were good enough to share was, I guess, the first time that I stumbled across a sergeant painting, actually. Yeah, uh, it was uh, the Spanish dancer uh, mm -hmm. that's been, uh, that was in the National Portrait Gallery in D.C. That's when I first saw it. I saw it my first year of college. Before then, I didn't know how to paint, never picked up a paintbrush. Um, <laughs> I was like, I was actually trying to study like 3D animation. You know, I was trying to get into the animation industry or wanted to. 
before I even knew what that meant, right? Um, but then I saw a Sargent painting. I'm like, wow, that's like, that's so beautiful to the point where uh, as soon as we left the museum, I, you know, I, I got back home and I bought my first paint set. And I'm like, you know, if I can just create 0.001% of what I just saw there within my paintings, like if I try to paint now, and if I were to just kind of create just a little inkling of what I saw in that Sergeant painting and share it with everybody, I feel like that would be worth it, you know? So that's the moment where I, you know, I felt like I wanted to share my paintings or at least try to make paintings that are good enough to share with people. Now, to go back to your, to your original question, when I wanted to share my paintings with you, um, I guess it was actually my first commission. It was a portrait commission. And, you know, um, it was actually um, a painting that I'd done with my, uh, of my, my classmate. And it was actually her aunt who commissioned me to paint her, right? So, you know, I, I painted her and, and when I presented it to the aunt, you know, she was like, wow, you know, because I guess they were like so far away. Mm. Her aunt's like, wow, I can like really feel like she's like there with me now looking at the painting because you were actually there with her. Like I, I painted that from life. I didn't paint it from a photo. So, you know, that's the moment where I feel like, wow, art can truly connect people just on another level. That's like, just, that does more than just, you know, writing or photography right mm -hmm. i mean no disrespect to those two mediums but i just feel like with that that's like kind of like a visual documentation that you know you can really attain and structuralize and you know share with people so that was the first moment where i realized i'm like okay i think this is um i guess this is worth it you know so yeah. that was the first one how, how much courage did it take to paint one of your peers like oh man uh it was a lot of <laughs> like it was scary because um I, I didn't really have a, a painting teacher at that time. So I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was purely just like going online and going on YouTube, just looking at videos of people painting. And I was just like, okay, how do they even do that? And how do I do that? So it was, it was very nerve wracking. Um, I, I'm lucky that I was able to still kind of capture the likeness just because I had a, a semi more structural drawing foundation because I learned drawing from uh, the academies in China in high school. So they taught us like the Russian academic, uh, academic method. So um, I was a, a little bit more confident in my drawing. So it, it wasn't that bad, but still it was very nerve wracking just because I didn't really understand how to handle color as mm. of yet, but it was good. Like they liked it. So they were really kind about it. So that's so cool that you were able to get that like foundation. Cause that I, mm -hmm. have you, have you seen that kind of benefit you? in terms of when you when you jumped into painting versus maybe if you see students that you may teach that maybe don't have that strong drawing foundation? A absolutely. I definitely okay. feel very lucky that I was able to, I guess, have that opportunity to learn, right? Because um, I, I feel like a lot of times where people want to paint something, especially a lot of my students, I feel like what's getting in their way isn't the idea, but it's more so the technical barrier. That's kind of standing between them and that idea, right? And I feel like drawing foundation and, you know, uh, the fundamentals of understanding how to draw and convey what you're seeing is so important because that in turn will translate and will transfer itself into the given idea that you kind of laid out within your head. So I, I just feel very lucky to kind of, you know, have that foundation, even though I, it was kind of short-lived. I've only studied in China for like, a year and a half during high school but even that was like infinitely better than not having anything at all so um I, I feel like it was because of that i'm actually able to still kind of keep on going where it was what helped jump start you know um the drive that i essentially just went on yeah 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 that's cool yeah i i love that i um, I was going to make a joke about, do people ever tell you that, oh, this makes Batman feel like he's right here, but. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I> man. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so let's say you wake up tomorrow and you're going to start, you know, a new mm -hmm. piece. Do you have like a list in your phone on your notes app? Like this is who I'm painting next, or is it more like you've got, you know, what, what's the first step? Is there an inspiration process or is it just like, no, here's what's on the easel today. And I'm, you know, I'm going to start putting down paint. 
You know, and this is the reason why I don't work in galleries anymore or I don't work with galleries because I'm purely inspirational. If I don't feel inspired by a particular image or a particular idea, I'm not going to obtain anything. Uh, <laughs> this is why I teach more because, you know, with that, I don't have to always come up with like the next big idea or the next big thing that, you know, that I need to do. Um, just because for me, I feel like painting to me feels a lot like yoga or a lot like meditation in a way, right? It's like you can't force meditation on somebody, um, which is why I feel like, you know, I, I find a lot more joy in helping people kind of get over their technical barriers as opposed to creating new pieces all the time. Um, so for me, I always, I don't really think about subject matter. Like for instance, like the Batman painting that I was, that that I, that's on my Instagram, that wasn't because I'm like, oh, I wanted to paint a Batman painting. I, I That was because I said I wanted to paint something that had dark turquoise and blue, mm -hmm. you know? So I was thinking more into abstraction, right? So a lot of my paintings too, I try not to make it just about the subject. I try to make it about the painting and the subject just what happens to kind of be there, right? And that's something that I always want to think about and always try to think about, right? Because um, I believe... It isn't just about the subject, it's about the atmosphere. So I usually think about particular atmospheres that I want to depict. Um, and that comes from either, you know, values or colors or anything like that. So for now, I'm thinking of something that's like more purple and green. So I don't know what that's going to turn out to be. Um, but, you know, yeah, like <laughs> that's kind of like what I'm thinking about. So I haven't really no like solid plants, but I, I have a few characters in my head, but mm, nothing solid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool that you uh, are you use like you talked about kind of those um, abstraction elements to undergird and, and inspire the representational works because that that's something that um, I'm trying to going to try to work on with my students is like I like uh, I've I've heard uh, some artists talk about like um, when you paint you need you need the idea right it's all about the idea mm -hmm. and. When I first heard that, man, that freaked me out because I was like, the idea, like, I, like, I, I thought it had to be a big idea, you know, something mm -hmm. like big. Yeah. But when you realize, like, because I, you know, I was like, I just like trees, you know, <laughs> like, I'm like, I want to paint this tree. But like, that's the idea. That, that's what they were saying, you know, it's not, mm -hmm. you, yeah. it's not that you need it to communicate the, you know, oh, it's the glory of the sun mixed with the, you know, whatever. Like, you don't need a deep message it's just something that what's the idea what's drawing you to this what like you said oh purple and green that's that's what i like or turquoise and blue so it's so helpful to kind of take that pressure off of yourself to have something like that where you you know it inspires you so that's so cool yeah, of course. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people forget sometimes that it's about having fun. That's why we actually do art. You know, uh, people get so caught up with techniques. They get so caught up with like, oh, what can I do? What can I do? You know, and oh, like, well, this person that I really like is doing this. Oh, I got to like follow their footstep. You know, they, they forget that this is all self-expression, which is why I personally don't believe that you can even, that art's even teachable. Like, I don't believe, like for me, I don't, I never title my classes as art classes because I, I really don't believe you can really teach art because that's self-expression. You can't teach someone how to express themselves. You can, however, give them the tools needed to help expand their vo uh, visual vocabulary and artistic vocabulary, right? So, you know, for me, I feel like, and I, I like to quote something that uh, one of my friends, Alex uh, Venezia said one time where he says, just make something so good that people can't ignore it. I, I like that quote, and I'm going to add a little bit more onto that quote, which is paint something that you enjoy. Because if you enjoy painting it, people are going to resonate with that enjoyment. I feel like resonating with enjoyment is a lot more important than, you know, oh, how cool or how technically accurate this technique is or whatever. I mean, that's all great, but I feel like that enjoyment is something that you know you can't really teach, but it's something that you that will just you know resonate throughout the painting and. If it connects with you, it's going to connect with someone else. And even if it connects with just one person, you made that person stay a lot better because they connected with it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I feel. Yeah. Man, I think you might have just answered our last question. Like, that was awesome. Oh, I did? The, the, question was <laughs> what, the question was, what do you want all of your future images to communicate, you know? Oh. And I, you know. <laughs> so, but you're welcome yeah. to, if you have anything to add to that, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean... Honestly, I feel like nowadays I paint mainly 
not for myself. I don't really, you know, I mean, I do paint for myself because I paint for my own enjoyment, but I also just want to create work that's, I guess, that allows someone else to look at it and say, hey, you know, that's like not ordinary like that. Oh, you know, like uh, if he can just paint something like that, I can I can paint something that I like too, you know? So I, I like to, you know, I, 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 I want my work nowadays, at least, at least the pop culture work to kind of help bridge that, Kind of insecurity that I know some people feel about particular subject matters, right? And I, I kind of want to bridge that and help, you know, alleviate that pressure with that stigma of needing to paint in some particular subjects, right? Mm -hmm. Because I believe painting should still be for fun. It should still be, you should paint whatever it is you like, you wh whatever it is that you enjoy. I feel like that at the end of the day is key in, you know, maintaining and preserving like this whole sense of doing art full time, right? Because what's the point of doing art? if you treat it just like a nine to five where you treat it like, uh, like, Oh God, I got to do this. I don't really want to, but, uh, like, you know, I, I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose. And, you know, of course I understand some people need to do that because they work with galleries that make them do certain things, uh, which is why I feel like balance is key. You know, like, I feel like, um, having a good, healthy balance is, is definitely something that I, I, I'm hoping everyone can kind of resonate with. So yeah, you know, that's so cool. Do you think it's the the Schmidt influence or is it that idea that you shared in your first story about your classmate that you were able to provide some connection for her aunt or what is it that draws you to, you know, portraiture particularly whether it's someone's pet or someone's family member or, you know, someone that we would recognize from pop culture? What do you think it is? Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like Schmidt definitely influenced me in more ways than one just because it wasn't just the techniques that he talked about in his books, but it was also um, like I remember there was this one YouTube video. You guys may have seen it before, but it was this one YouTube video. It opened up with um, uh, Nancy Guzik opening up like I think a package for him, and you know, uh, in the video it was like kind of like a video vlog where it kind of you know. And I tell my students to watch that video all the time every time they feel kind of like lost, not for the techniques because there aren't really any tutorial or instructions within that 12 minute video it was basically a, a video vlog kind of like of you know him detailing like oh his time in the studio there's even like a little part where he's like dancing with Nancy in the studio and just having a good time and I, I really feel like that's kind of like what art's about you know what I mean it's not just making a pretty picture and calling it a day you know I, I believe it's like a lifestyle right and that's something that um, that really resonated with me. So when I saw that, that's when I'm like, okay, it isn't just about imagery. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's about kind of like, it's just that, that, that philosophy of, you know, living life and doing what you like. And, and yeah, that, that's something that I feel like, um, you know, I, I try to at least try my best to at least like, you know, capture, uh, capture within my work. And hopefully, you know, sometimes, sometimes it, sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't, but yeah. <laughs> he's being modest folks yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and to prove my point kai tell them where they can find you online so they can go see how modest you're being yeah. oh yeah i mean <laughs> um you guys can uh, check me out on instagram my name is uh kylan q that's k-a-i-l-u-n-q-u -U. you'll probably be able to see it on the title wherever you're <laughs> listening to this <laughs> um it, it's my, my name is pretty uncommon so it's pretty easy to find me uh quick google search it'll just you know pop all the, all the links that you guys you guys can check out like my website and and all that yeah <laughs> and then you said you're teaching on sentient is that the only place you're teaching right now or um yeah as of right now currently i'm i'm mainly doing work with sentient um they're actually about to release um sentient 2.0 I, I believe and um i have a i'm gonna be one of the mentors that's offering mentorship um with them so that's gonna be pretty cool so um, I'm kind of cost, I'm currently working with them right now on developing that. And yeah, I'm excited to just kind of you know, share whatever it is that I know and just, you know, help explore uh, with all the students every week. So that's uh, something that I'm excited about. Once again, thank you so much to Kai for coming on the podcast this week. Be sure to follow Kai on Instagram at K-A-I-L-U-N-Q-U -U to stay up to date with Kai's journey. You can also see his artwork on kailunku.com. So there you can access links to where he teaches, and you can also sign up for his email list if you're interested.
As always, you can subscribe to the Creative Community Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube. We're on all of them, Mark. If, if people can't find us, they're not looking. That's what I have to say. So that's how you can stay up to date with episodes like this one. Every two weeks, we put something out. Either it's a story help as far as telling stories, a story prompt, an exercise, or an interview with a professional who, uh, like Kai, just has some great wisdom for us to learn from and, and some really inspirational things to say. So we hope that will be a, be- a benefit to you. Yeah, and you can connect with us through Facebook and Instagram. We're on both of those, both of them. If people cannot find us on either of those, it is also because they are not looking. Okay, Destination Arete, A-R-E-T-E. And that is for information about future episodes like this one, as well as upcoming community activities. We've been posting more um, clips. David's been doing a great job of putting uh, little clips up there on social media. Um, So if you're interested in, you know, maybe finding out if you want to listen to an episode before you just dive right in, Instagram is a great place to also find uh, the different clips from the episodes. So, but if you want to be the first to hear about upcoming interviews, sneak peeks, future content, I'm talking about if you want to be in the inner circle, if you want to be in that that little tight group of Arte people that know what there is to know, then you can sign up for the newsletter. At, you can send an email to destinationarate at gmail.com and that will subscribe you to our newsletter or um, you can just email Wait, I think I said that already. No. Oh, you can also go to destinationrta.com slash contact and you can send an email, type it in the box and that will also subscribe you to the newsletter. So yeah. And Mark, speaking of little clips, if people want to follow us on TikTok, oh, sometimes little clips go on TikTok. So it's the same thing. Destination A-R-E-T-E. And you guys, this episode, first time we've ever told anybody. So you're getting exclusive content right now, but if you want the rest of the exclusive content... That email list, that's where you go to get it. So we'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the Creative Community Podcast. We'll see you then. Bye.